Hello. Warm greetings. Welcome to the webinar on digital ethnography. Today, we are going to look at um, the conceptual framework proposed by Shara Pink and her co-authors uh, in their book, Digital Ethnography, Principles and Practice. In the previous sessions, we have seen um, the concept of experiences, researching experiences and, uh, and the practices, what people do and the things, the objects that uh, are part of our lives. So today we are going to focus on the concept um, relationships, our intimate social environments. <clears throat> so in their book, Digital Ethnography, Practice and uh, Principles and Practice, Shara Pink and her co-authors <clears throat> outlined an approach to doing ethnography. Uh, they say digital ethnography outlines an approach to doing ethnography in a, a contemporary world. It invites researchers to consider how we live and research in a digital material and sensory environment. This is not a static world or environment. Rather, it is one in which we need to know how to research in it as it develops and uh, changes. Digital ethnography also explores the consequences of the presence of digital media in shaping the techniques and processes through which we practice ethnography and accounts for how digital methodological and practical and theoretical dimensions of ethnographic research are increasingly intertwined. Their book is uh, not just uh, for the specialist in uh, digital media, rather it is a proposal for how we might do ethnography as the digital unfolds as a part of the world that we co-inhabit with the people who participate in our research. Doing research with, through, and in an environment partially constituted by digital media has led to the development of new and innovative methods and uh, challenged uh, existing conceptual and analytical categories. It has invented us, it has invited us not only to theorize the digital world in new ways, but also to rethink how we have understood pre-digital practices media and environments. Digital ethnography addresses this context by explaining the possibilities of digital ethnography for both researching and uh, redefining central concepts in social and cultural research. The seven concepts uh, they proposed, uh, experiences, practices, things, relationships, social worlds, localities, and events. These are the seven concepts proposed by these others, Shara Pink and her co-authors of the book, uh, Digital Ethnography, pra Principles and Practice. So we, uh, today we are, we are going to discuss uh, all on the, uh, the concept of relationships, our intimate uh, social environments, um, and uh, how this digital ethnography can be undertaken according to the others and uh, the case studies uh, they mentioned and the examples they have given in their book, those things we are going to discuss. So um, there are uh, six uh, uh, side headings bringing together the study of relationships and media. So under researching relationships, so bringing together the study of relationships and media. How does digital media change the formation and qualities of relationships? Researching relationships through digital ethnography, how it uh, happens. 
and um, understanding personalization understanding personalization and intimacy through sensor scenarios of use researching communication and care in transnational families and reflecting on uh, relationships as a category of digital ethnographic research so these are the key ideas and um, which we are going to discuss so in this session we explore how digital ethnography can be used to research uh, contemporary relationships first we outline how relations have been conceptualized and studied in the social sciences and the role of media and communication in the formation of relationships next we discuss how ethnographers might approach human relationships when they are digitally uh, mediated we then focus on one concept that has come to predominate recent discussions of digital <clears throat> relationships co-presence <clears throat> by exploring the changing practices of co-presence in a digital era we bring to the fore the specificity of how everyday human relationships are shaped in part by the qualities and uh, affordances of digital media technologies through three ethnographic examples we consider how digital ethnographic methods can be mobilized for researching co-presence through a range of ethnographic techniques including reenactments examining mobile phone uh, contact list scenarios of use digital individual and uh, group interviews and participation participant observation through three ethnographic examples we consider how digital ethnography methods can be mobilized for researching co-presence through a range of ethnographic techniques including reenactments examining mobile phone contact lists scenarios of use individual and group interviews and participant observation we focus on the role of media and communication for the development maintenance expression and negotiations of relationships this will include a focus on a particular forms of intimacy including relationships with a significant others such as boyfriends girlfriends spouses and other partners as well as family members so what are relationships and how do they develop understanding the ways in which relationships are formed maintained and structured ha understanding the ways in which relationships are formed maintained and uh, structured has been a fundamental concern for so, uh, for scholars across the social sciences and humanities early work in anthropology explored different social structures around the world with a particular focus on understanding the languages rules or grammars of these uh, social and cultural systems these interests resulted in studies of family kinship and descent for example dumont and leach and pearson pit rivers radley brown etc different forms of political governance religious practices race and ethnicity and um, uh, processes such as uh, gifting reciprocity and other forms of exchange for example um, um, the others forts and malinowski tyler bath mars malinowski etc in sociology scholars focused on the processes through which a society is held together many sociologists have studied uh, <clears throat> families often viewed as the fundamental unit of society such as landmark works such as uh, michael eng and paul wilmot study of family and kinship in east london 
um, which was taken in 1957. And John Ray's, uh, John Ray Paul's managers and their wives. Uh, more, more recently, sociologists such as Ray Paul uh, and Liz Spencer have focused on friendship, arguing that these relationships form a kind of social glue. One particularly influential set of theories that aimed at understanding the ways in which a society is built and stays together is symbolic interactionism, quote unquote, symbolic interactionism. One particularly influential set of theories that aimed at understanding the ways in which a society is built and stays together is, quote, a symbolic interactionism, unquote. This approach develops a specific focus on human interaction and has been important not only for anthropologists and sociologists, but also for social psychology and communication. Founded, Charles, uh, founded by Charles Cooley and George Herbert Mead in the early 20th century, symbolic interactionists argued that our world is socially constructed and it does not exist outside of actions and social interactions. I want to repeat this statement. <clears throat> founded by this uh, symbolic interactionism, founded by Charles Cooley and George Herbert Mead in the early 20th century, uh, symbolic interactionists argued that our world is our world is socially constructed and does not exist outside of actions and social interactions. Relationships between the self and others and the internal dialogue within the self are constituted in and through these social interactions between different kinds of objects. Cooley. A mean described as Mead described the process, the individual experiences himself as an object, not directly, but only indirectly from the particular standpoints of other members of the same social group. Sociologist Erving Golf, uh, Erving, Erving Goffman's classic text, the presentation of self in everyday life, introduced the concept of social dramaturgy. Uh, into, uh, sociologist Erving Goffman introduced the presentation of the self in everyday life in his book, introduced the concept of social dramaturgy. Uh, which call attention to the ways uh, in which a social context shapes the roles and performances that we take on in our uh, everyday lives. Socially, Goffman explored how individuals experiment with and perform different roles and identities using language, actions, and gestures, drawing attention to the front and the back stages uh, through which uh, we operate. Specifically, Goffman explored how individuals experiment with and perform different roles and identities using language, actions, and gestures, drawing attention to the front and back stages through which we operate. This includes how a person prepares for, a, for an interaction with others through clothing and other props, um, how they present themselves on the front stage where other people and audience can see the performance, how the audience responds to the performance, and how the person configures their front and backstage performances in response to the audience. These early studies of social life also reveal the importance of language, symbols, and communication in our interactions. Malinowski argued that Ties of union are created by a mere exchange of words. Let me repeat this Malinowski's argument. Malinowski argued that 
ties of union are created by a mere exchange of words. Further, suggesting that the communication of words is the first to establish links of fellowship. The communication of words is the first to establish links of fellowship. This includes the formation of speech communities and the importance of cultural competence in communication. Durante and uh, Gumpard in their books, 94 and uh, 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 1971. <clears throat> Uh, and especially code switching within particular groups and contexts. Other studies uh, have explored the different mechanisms through which connections are forged. In addition to nonverbal communication, scholars identified practices such as uh, patic communication, that is, uh, staying in touch without content or information being disseminated. Malinowski. 1923. This includes engaging, this includes engaging in quote, small talk, unquote, um, such as asking how the weather is, a way to say hello while passing by. Small talk. This includes engaging in small talk, such as asking how the weather is a way to say hello while passing by or asking an acquaintance, what's up? Uh, in these exchanges, the act of communication is more important than the content of the conversation. Yet other studies have focused on the social function of practices such as joking, ritualized banter and gossip in creating social cohesion within uh, particular groups. Uh, through this work, we, the, we see the ways in which um, relationships are formed through interactions with the things and objects, including people. One minute, my wife is calling. Last Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yet other studies have focused on the social function of practices such as joking, ritualized. Uh, uh, banter and gossip in creating social cohesion um, within particular groups. But through this work, we see the ways in which relationships are formed through interactions uh, with things and objects, including people. These, inter these interactions form the basis of creating meaning and in turn, people learn to make sense of, manage and transform these meanings over time through, interact, through interpretation. Let me repeat, these interactions form the basis for creating meaning and in turn, people learn to make sense of, manage and transform these meanings over time through interpretation. In effect, interaction and people's interpretations of these interactions came to represent the primary unit through which meaning is made, shaping the ways that people develop relationships with others and constitute their social worlds. Bringing together the study of relationships and media, many of the early studies of relationship formation Many of the early studies of relationship formation and development focused upon small communities who lived in close physical proximity to one another. Indeed, Goffman noted that proximity is important in creating what he termed the, quote, full conditions of co-presence, unquote. Full conditions of 
co-presence where persons must sense that these are close enough to be per perceived in whatever they are doing including their experiencing of others and close enough to be perceived in this sensing of being perceived yet even in close knit societies where most communication takes place in person forms of mediation are always present for example messages are conveyed through third party objects or people such as notes sound signals or word of mouth they are also they are also mediated through language facial expressions gestures and a range of other communication norms and practices the invention and dissemination of the printing press other technology improvements did not invent mediation they simply expanded its geographical reach let me repeat the statement the invention and dissemination of the printing press other technological improvements did not invent mediation they simply expanded its geographical reach indeed recent studies of the role of media even the most mundane and pre digital forms such as letters and postcards um, further challenge the importance of proximity and co location for the development of personal relationships these studies point out that co presence does not depend on people meeting face to face rather it can be created through media as uh, hijort asserts quote the postcard was marked by the politics of co prisons shifts in public and private spheres fusions of work and leisure symbolized by the uh, flaneur being here and yet there being present whilst simultaneously absent the studies of um, milne uh, published in 2010 and he showed the um, um, 2005 b so in their studies you know um, these co presence uh, was explained these studies point out that co presence does not depend on people meeting face to face rather it can be created through media as hijort uh, exerts the postcard was marked by the politics of co presence shifts in public and private spheres fusions of work and leisure being the being here and yet there uh, being present will simultaneously absent uh, laura ahern has explored um the ways in which low letters and the increase in literacy associated with their emergence helped to facilitate a shift from arranged marriage to elopements and low marriages in nepal so uh, increase in literacy associated with their emergence helped to facilitate a shift from arranged uh, marriages uh, to elopements uh from uh, and uh, low marriages in nepal these letters often became the main way through which uh, these uh, intimate relationships developed in a cultural context uh, where face to face interactions between men and women were closely managed cloudy fisher cloudy fisher a social history of the landline in the usa also emphasizes the importance of landline for women and others seeking to engage with the others beyond the neighborhood and the domestic spheres studies of migration and transnationalism have 
been particularly important for challenging assumptions about the degree to which geographically dispersed agents experience a sense of physical and or psychological proximity through the use of particular communication technologies. Milne. Panagogos, Panagogos and Host uh, in 2006 argued that migrants are often at the forefront of creative practices and communication technology adoption, given the desire to stay connected, given the desire to stay connected, communicate and create co-presence. For example, Karen Richman's study in 2005, work with uh, Haitian migrants outlines the ways in which um, cassette tapes of religious ceremonies and rituals that traveled from Haiti into different communities in Florida often incorporated personal messages within the ceremonies, such as songs questioning why remittances had not been sent or longing for a visit. Similarly, Maria Now and Miller uh, in their study in um, uh, 2011 um, chronicle the practice of uh, circulating letters and cassette tapes among a Filipino migrant women and their children, drawing attention to the differential appropriation of a particular media in relation to particular relationships. The qualities of the particular media selected and the kinds of materialities and temporalities created through the process of uh, uh, mediation. In a project that used digital video making as part of its research method and for its uh, dissemination, Rebecca Seveg in 2011 recounts the maintenance of relationships among Mexican parents who migrated to the USA and children who remained in their hometown in Mexico. Family members sent videos of first communions and house building between Mexico and the USA. Such examples highlight both the importance of media for creating opportunities for co-presence and the importance of a remediation or the process by which new forms of media rework and configure uh, our relationship to older media use and practice in shaping contemporary patterns of communication. How does digital media changes the formation and the qualities of relationships? How does uh, digital media change the formation and the qualities of relationships? So the first approach uh, focus on the management of communication and connection through different platforms. Today, there is a broad range of digital media technologies that can be employed for different communication ends. Nancy Byman's book, Personal Communication in the Digital Age, published in 2010, describes the ways in which digital media has created new forms and patterns of social, um, uh, patterns of personal connection. Among other characteristics of these new connections, she highlights how people use digital media to manage relationships, particularly by navigating communication through synchronous and asynchronous features. Boyd uh, 2008 and uh, uh, 2014, Broaden, Broad, Broadbent 2012. BAME, BAME further emphasizes that digitally mediated communication should not be viewed as an impoverished or second order to face-to-face -to -face communication. Rather, mediated communication is not a space, it is an additional tool people use to connect, one which can only be understood 
as deeply embedded in and influenced by the daily realities of embodied life. The tools of digital communication comes uh, with its own sets of cues, signals, and ways of expressing emotion <clears throat> that must be understood within the context of their use, people's desires and their affordances of media. Madino and Miller's concept of polymedia suggests that cost and access are no longer the primary determinants of media choice. Rather, Madino and Miller argue that the primary concern shifts from the constraints imposed by each individual medium to an emphasis upon the social, emotional, and moral consequences of choosing between those different media. As the choice of medium acquires a communicative intent, navigating the environment of a polymedia becomes inextricably uh, linked to the ways in which interpersonal relationships are experienced and managed. Willing's book uh, in 2006, uh, work on the ways in which a transnational families caring for older family members decides to communicate through email highlights, uh, the social and emotional relationship between relationships and platforms. In uh, Willing's uh, case, children opt for email because the content of the communication is more important than the uh, sense of connection or co-presence. Similarly, uh, Gershon's uh, 2010 uh, book um, analyzes the relationship between media ideologies and practices among college students, highlights the importance of identifying the uh, appropriate medium or channel for disconnecting or breaking up with someone in a changing media ecology. The second approach highlights the importance of digital media for the creation of co-presence. Fields such as mobile communication and internet studies acknowledge the significance of uh, uh, multiple forms of presence or ways of being together. Kenneth Gergen in 2002 considers how the mobile phone transformed the relationship between those who are physically co-located and the absent presence. Co Let me repeat the statement. Kenneth Gergen considers how the mobile phone transformed the relationship between those who are physically co-located and the uh, quote, absent presence, unquote, um, referring to relationships uh, with the hold, referring to relationships we hold with partners, children and family who are not physically present in one space. Christian Lokope in 2004 explores how mobile phones permit interactions uh, to continue across space and time as relationships are reinforced and maintained through a series of interactions we call via calls and SMS, SMS um, uh, messages. Christian Licope in 2004 explores how mobile phones permit interactions to continue across space and time as relationships are reinforced and maintained through a series of interactions via calls and SMS messages. As he describes, maintaining, the, maintaining this connected presence ratified by the interlocutor allows for a lesser formality of mediated interaction it becomes less necessary to reassert the formal and institutional aspects of the frame of interaction at each call if one is feeling connected to the other person through a continuous flow of small communicative acts. 
as regards uh, interpersonal relations, the question is also how the redistribution of the modes of interaction changes the nature of relations, if at all. Subsequent work has explored the role of your photographs and S, uh, MMS as ways to maintain forms of visual intimate co-presence. Gogin and Hijort uh, in 2009 and Ito Wakabe in 2005, uh, their works uh, explains this thing. The concept, of, the concept of co-presence therefore stands for a, a range of ways of being together. Uh, that do not necessarily involve um, being in the same physical material locality, including, including during ethnographic research. Below uh, 2010. The maintenance of co-presence increasingly occurs across media platforms such as SMS and uh, MMS to apps such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As uh, Go Govani um, Mantovani and uh, Giuseppe Riva in 1998 note, early debates in internet studies fail to acknowledge that presence is always mediated and that is, and that it is culturally constructed. Uh, early debates in the internet studies fail to acknowledge that presence is always mediated and that it is culturally constructed. And yet equally significant is uh, recognizing that the ability of the subject to elide, elide uh, or ignore uh, this mediation is uh, crucial to the presence effect. It is in this way that uh, the presence uh, can be understood as a psychological state whereby some form of technology, such as the use of multiple screens, has shaped the subject to experience and perception. Agardo and Martin J. 2014. For example, uh, Mizuko Ito and Daisuke Okabe in uh, 2005, highlight the importance of ambient virtual co-presence, quote, ambient virtual co-presence, unquote, which they describe as, quote, a way of maintaining ongoing background awareness of others and of keeping multiple channels of communication open, unquote. An example of this kind of uh, backgrounding is evident in Miller and uh, Sinanans in 2014, the study of webcam, which outlines the ways in which some transnational families keep their webcam switched on while they carry out mundane activities such as cooking. Yet, not all forms of co-presence are dispersed across apps, platforms, spaces and modes facilitate a sense of connection and intimacy. Well, it's 2030. Work among female migrants in China um, details the use of mobile phones for surveillance and monitoring by employers uh, who often exploit migrants' uh, precarious uh, positions. In different contexts, in a different context, Melissa Greg in 2011, highlights how for workers in creative industries, the presence of smartphones, laptops, and other digital media technologies contribute to the conflation of home and work. What she terms the quote, presence bleed, un uncut. Presence bleed. In post industrial capitalism, she draws attention to the ways in which these practices both reflect and create the increasing significance of work in the lives of flexible workers. In essence, such a conceptualizations of co-presence that take mediated relationships into account challenge assumptions about the role of digital media in facilitating 
connection and breakdown binaries such as here and there, virtual and actual, online and offline, absent and present. Researching relationships through digital ethnography. We examine three different ways in which the co-presence and intimacy can be studied through digital ethnography. As we show, digital ethnography offers us new ways to understand both the changing communication practices in relationships and the amplification of existing rituals and intimacies. The first, the first example examines how the customization or personalization of the inside and outside of mobile phones can map relations onto and through hardware and software. The second example explores how mobile phone use reveals <clears throat> The second example explores how mobile phone use reveals gendered relationships among transnational families spread between Jamaica and the UK. The final example demonstrates how transnational Chinese families use online gaming sites like a happy form as a spaces for dwelling and the connection. In all these examples, we attend to small scale and personal relationships, highlighting the ways in which digital media integrate uh, with the existing practices and uh, extended, extend others. Understanding the understanding personalization and the intimacy through scenarios of use. Uh, Ito Okabe and uh, Misa Matsuda. 2005 argued a decade ago that <clears throat> the mobile, uh, let me repeat the statement. Um, Ito Okabe and Misa Matasuda, Ito Okabe and Misa Matsuda in 2005 argued the mobile phone is one of the most quote personal unquote comma quote portable unquote and quote pedestrian unquote objects in our digital media ecology people develop relationships with their mobile phones as much as they use their mobile phones to enhance relationships with other people and given the personal nature of the mobile, they are often one of the most intimate forms of everyday digital media. Fortunati, Fortunati, 2002. However, while mobile phone use uh, generates uh, forms of intimacy, it does not follow that these intimacies are um, always experienced privately. Rather, mobile phones include features that make it possible to render intimacies public. They are part of a broader socio-technical trend. However, while mobile phone use generates a forms of intimacy, it does not uh, follow that these intimacies are, are always uh, experienced privately. Rather, mobile phone include features that made it possible to render intimacies public. They are part of a broader social um, technical trend in which the sites for the practice of intimacies extended to a wider audience um, through use of various media. As Lauren Belland argues, intimacy had taken 
on a new geographies and forms of uh, publicness. In fact, such, in, such intimacies extend beyond personal relationships to include macro structures like institutions and cultures. Michael Hedgefield, for example, um, suggest that cultural intimacy can be uh, understood as the recognition of those aspects of cultural identity that are considered a source of external embarrassment, but uh, that nevertheless provide insiders with their assurance of common sociality. Media such as television, newspapers, and radio expand the possibilities of creating such cultural intimacy because they facilitate communication between different layers of society, extending these observations beyond the culture of nation states. Eva Elos in 2007 uh, associates such forms of closeness with the specific political and economic configurations, um, su suggesting that uh, capitalism fosters uh, an, an intensely emotional culture that blurs workplace, family, and relationships rather than creates boundaries between public and private and emotions and rationality. In a related approach, Lynn Timmison in 1998 extended earlier work of earlier work by Giddens 1992 to detail how intimacy is gendered as well as culturally and socioeconomically informed. These studies are part of an uh, uh, intimate turn. Uh, these studies are part of an, quote, intimate turn, unquote, that has impacted upon various facets of cultural practice and politics as integral to social life. Ahmed, 2004. For Ahmed, emotions are, quote, the flesh of time, unquote, that get attributed to projects, media, context, and people in ways that are sticky. Ahmed defines sticky as a situations and the interpretations that are full of effect. Over the past few decades, researchers have increasingly sought to understand how digital media are implicated in the constitution of intimacy. For example, literature around mobile media has highlighted uh, that it uh, magnifies the importance of uh, place. It uh, 2002. Amparo Lassen in 2004 argues that mobile media devices, mo mobile media devices operate as a repositories for the emotional and intimate and highlights the and highlights that emotion has always involved motion. And thus the thus can be understood as mobile. Yes, Jan Vincent and uh, Leo Paulina Fortunati, 2009, work shows this connection between movement and emotion also indicates why mobile, mobile phones have been so successful in being repositories and vehicles for intimacy. Emotions are always mobile, even when they are seemingly immobilized in moments of crisis, as was the case uh, with the 11 March uh, 2011, Japanese earthquake, tsunami, and um, Fukushima disaster known as 311. Uh, during 311, people hung into um, people hung onto their mobile phones as though they were repositories containing their intimate friends and family. 
this occurred despite the fact that the technology failed and uh, they could not make actual contact. Researching the mobile phone can provide insight into how the phone both literally and symbolically creates the effective qualities of intimacy in different contexts. Larissa Jord's work in 2009 on the gender dimensions of mobile media in the Asia Pacific region has focused on the different ways that personalization reflects the socio-cultural notions of intimacy. This involves studying how participants of symbolic, material, expressive, and communicative media practices played out through use of mobile media, hardware, and software. Hijot conducted interviews with, with participants over a period of seven years in order to understand these practices across a broad period of time. While with the standard interview techniques, Jot um, uh, used the scenarios of use. He Jot uh, used the quote scenarios of use unquote method, a, a deep interviewing technique developed with Michael Arnold that involves reviewing a participant's typical day from the moment they wake up until the moment they go to sleep. Participants are asked to share information about uh, when they use media and why, uh, with interviews, interviewers asking further questions about the detail of the everyday and mundane. Interview, interviews often last for two to three hours. Scenarios of use and uh, reenactments assist discussion of some of the tacit and familiar practices that can be overlooked in ordinary interviews. Alongside the scenarios of use method, um, uh, participants were also asked to collect a diary over a month, including visual images such as a screenshot, such as screenshots, so that the researcher could gain a sense of some of the key phone applications that participants were using, as well as how and why they used them. Then researching communication and care in transnational families. As feminist scholars have argued for some time, gender fundamentally structures communication, movement, migration, and the dynamics of power that emerge cross, sorry, uh, if, as feminist scholars have argued for some time, gender fundamentally structures the communication, movement, migration, and the dynamics of power that emerge across transnational spaces. Mahler and Passer, 2001. Passer and Mahler, 2003. The extensive literature on gender and family in the Caribbean, such as Edith Clark's My Mother Who Fathered Me. Uh, the extensive literature on gender and family in the Caribbean, such as Edith Clark's book titled, My Mother Who Fathered Me, published in 1999, and 19, um, <clears throat> 1999. So the work on the matrilocal family by Smith, 1996, uh, for example, let me repeat the statements. Uh, the extensive literature on gender and family in the Caribbean, such as Edith Clark's My Mother Who Fathered Me, and a work on the um, matrilocal family by Smith, 1996. For example, highlight how mothers and grandmothers play one of the most central roles in the family and household unit. Indeed, mothers and grandmothers have always played a central role in childcare, 
often facilitating their ch children's ability to take advantage of educational and occupational opportunities on a, tenant, on a temporary or permanent basis, reinforcing the key role on mo of mothers and grandmothers in the family. Plaza 2000 suggests that this central female figure of the household is also prevalent among Caribbean migrant communities and notes that, and notes the emergence of, quote, transnational grannies, unquote, who travel between the US, Canada, the UK, and the Caribbean to visit relatives and look after their siblings. Children and grandchildren bearing food, gifts, other household items associated with the Jamaican culture. This example integrates supports the work with the return and transnational migrants. Courts 2006 A and 2006 B and 2007, 2011, and her study of mobile communication with Daniel Miller in rural and urban Jamaica. One of the um, key techniques used in, in the latter study was an analysis of individuals' contact lists. One of the key techniques used in the latter study was an analysis of individuals' contact lists through a discussion of all the names and numbers saved in their phone. Participants documented each contact's name and relationship to them. The last name they spoke with the, that person, uh, sorry, the last time they spoke with that person, what they talked about and how frequently they sent or received calls and messages from them. This contact list study also involved going through the entire phone uh, such as looking through pictures saved, screen savers, music, ringtones, and other forms of uh, customization, combined with the broader ethnographic research that uh, host carried out between 1999 and 2002, and again in 2004, uh, 2007, and uh, 2009, the contact list study enabled host to understand the structure of relationships and networks activated through mobile phones. It also generated, <coughs> excuse me. It also generated insights into some of the broader social implications of these structures, particularly gender relations in families for understanding the meaning of the mobile phone in people's everyday lives. Researching ambivalent playfulness uh, through happy form. In China, three very different but interrelated phenomena have evolved around the online gaming communities. First phenomena such as uh, in-game protesting, Chan 2009, Hijort and Chan 2009, have highlighted the role of the internet as a form of public sphere for a political agency, which is, as, which is especially apparent in blogging culture. Second, the locative capability of mobiles exemplified in the rise of gamified location-based services, such as uh, Jepanga, where electronic and uh, co-present social spaces are overlaid onto the geographic and physical. Third, the uh, third, we see millions of young and old people who now play simple casual social games, such as Happy Form through social media, such as uh, uh, Ren Ren and uh, Kei Xin. Um, it is uh, this third phenomenon that is of a special interest mentioned in the fifth chapter on relations. We are reflecting on relationships as a category of digital ethnographic research. 
the three examples in this chapter explored how digital ethnography enables researchers to understand how relationships are formed in through the three examples uh, in this chapter explored how digital ethnography enables researchers to understand how relationships are formed in through and with digital media and technology and the different forms of co-presence uh, which are central to relationships. As we illustrated, the particular ways in which co-presence becomes meaningful is shaped by different cultural contexts. Norms around the ways in which intimacy is expressed, gender forms of behavior and expectations, particularly across different generations. Understanding the rise and fall of happy form in China helps us to un appreciate. Understanding the rise and fall of happy form in China helps us to appreciate the particular ways in which social media gaming has been emerged by different generations. It also provides insight into the ebbs and flows of games as part of popular culture uh, imaginaries. Happy Form highlights the rise and fall of social media games, but within a different cultural context, Happy Form was the precursor to one of the first social media game successes in English speaking context. Jinga's form will, a form will help to define Jinga's importance <clears throat> in the newly developing area of social games and apps and assisted Jonga's colonization of Facebook games. Launched in the summer of 2008, Happy Form soon boosted 23 million users across three social media platforms. Renaren, Kexin, and QZone Millward to 2012. By 2009, millions of parents in China were playing Happy Farm Day and Night. By 2009, millions of parents in China were playing Happy Farm Day and Night with their young adult children uh, who had moved away from home to study or work. Happy Farm through its ambient play, afforded a type of omnipresent co-presence uh, between family members separated by physical distance. By, uh, by 2009, millions of parents in China were playing happy form day and night with their young adult children who had moved away from home to study our work, Happy Form, through its ambient play, afforded a type of omnipresent co-presence between family members separated by physical distance. Like having a family member in the background, Happy Form helped to ease much of the loneliness on the part of both parents and their children studying away from home. Hijot and Arnold, to 2013. This study provided insight into the cross-generational media practices being used in uh, <clears throat> Shanghai to connect geographically distinct children and their parents. Baling Ho often taught their parents how to use the new media and were surprised by their uh, sometimes passionate uptake. The cross-generational use demonstrates the ways in which the often tacit etiquette and vernacular around mobile media differs across the generations. The let me repeat, the cross-generational usage demonstrates the ways in which the often tacit etiquette and vernacular around mobile phones media differs 
across the generations. Moreover, this study highlights how intimacy and co-presence are actually specific with many of the mundane practices, particular to the cultural and linguistic history of China. While others speak more generally to shifting relationships to and within mobile media. The first two examples highlight some of the transformations in the practices of co-presence that have come with the introduction of the mobile phone. As the first example demonstrate mobile phones are yent wine. As the first example demonstrate mobile phones entwine the material and the immaterial dimensions of relationships, both in terms of representation and maintenance. We saw how Hello Kitties attached to a phone can help to emotionally quote, locate, unquote, the phone through personalization practices. However, in each different cultural context, we see how the media can be, quote, located, unquote, uh, and uh, made meaningful by entangling personalization practices across platforms, media, and context. In both cases, the mobile phone becomes a repository for fleeting moments of intimacy, both in terms of the co-presence they enable, but also the records of calls archived into the mobile phone, which host and her colleagues used to review phone calls. It became evident in Hijot and Hoss respective studies that if someone's mobile phone was lost or stolen, the messages and images would not necessarily be decipherable. They are fleeting contingencies of the moment representing what we have been describing as intimate co-presence. These messages and images shared across online and offline software and the hardware spaces are indexes of the contemporary life and uh, its uh, movements across uh, temporality and liveness and the immediacy and intimacy. Let me repeat. These messages and images share across online and offline software and hardware spaces are indexes of the contemporary life and its movements across, contempor uh, across temporality and liveness, Im immediacy and intimacy. The second two examples work together to highlight the importance of mobile phones and social media in mediating a sense of co-presence and intimacy across um, different national um, scales. <clears throat> the second two examples work together to highlight the importance of mobile phones and social media in mediating a sense of co-presence and intimacy across different national scales. In the example of a grandmother in Jamaica worrying about her children and grandchildren in England, we see how the mobile phone becomes a way through which she copes with a family crisis where uh, if present, she would have played a central role as a female head of the family in keeping the um, <clears throat> family together. Through her affordable mobile phone connection, she works to find ways to stay connected and to care for and support for children and grandchildren. Listening to voices and sounds becomes central to this process. In the examples of happy form, we see Chinese young people using a gaming platform to create the sense of being together to maintain the close ties with the parents um, when they move away from their hometown for study or work. However, in their case, the sense of co-presence comes, comes through the creation of a sense of being together uh, in a mundane but a playful fashion, almost as if they were gathered around the television together in their home. We also see 
broader issues of power being negotiated in all three examples. In the first example of a girlfriend inscribing her eye as a screensaver on a mobile phone, the screensaver is not only a reminder of her, but it is also a reminder about the uh, proper way to behave as a boyfriend in Korea. The second example in Jamaica highlights the ways in which the mobile phone can be at once an object through which norms around the grandmothering can be maintained, but is also the same object through which young men in Jamaica work to counteract the economic marginalization that many young men feel in Jamaica. Finally, the cross generational relationships developed through the use of happy form among Chinese families challenges the myth that all members of generation Y are digital natives. Crawford and Robinson study 2030, 20, 2013. Geyser and uh, Palfrey 2008. In this case, parents were often hewers media in this case, parents were often heavier media users than the younger generation. In all these examples, the mobile phone is neither a good nor a bad device which brings about a change or transformation. It is the agency and context for their use that determine their meaning and in turn their capacity to empower survey or reinforce uh, the structures of power in a given setting. As noted in the first ethnographic example, the mobile phone has been a particularly fruitful device through which to understand digitally mediated relationships and a great deal of the early mobile media and communication literature pushed the boundaries of what could be understood and studied through the mobile phone. However, and as we see in the case of happy phone, the mobile phone is often a route into other digital practices. As digital and uh, online media become more mobile, the ways in which uh, we can research, produce knowledge with, analyze and disseminate research findings are shifting. The potential uses of mobile and locative media in these contexts are expanding as these technologies are part of the lives of participants in research, as well as forming um, part of research practice. Researchers are, are diversifying their methods in order to carry out more nuanced studies and identify different scenarios of media use. How do we study a phenomenon as dynamic as relationships across multiple forms of co-presence and co-location? What are some of the ways in which the messiness of media can be engaged as a lens to understand the messiness of social relationships? Interviews are often in which mobile and locative media technologies and videos are used, still form an important part of the way that we as researchers can be with people as they play out their social embodied and sensory and technological relationships with and through these technologies. Participant observation in this context becomes a tool of communication and research as personal locative and mobile media are used as part of a research process, both within our relationships with participants and as parts of people's relationship with others that we wish to observe unfold. Additionally, scenarios of use and reenactments as participants use and show us how they use various platforms and applications can enable us to consider the types of uh, <clears throat> performativity and etiquette, tacit and uh, fatigue 
that are part of the ways that social relationships are constituted through the material and immaterial dimensions of the ways that people use and experience digital media. Let me repeat this. Additionally, scenarios of use, reenactments as participants use and show us how they use various platforms and applications can enable us to consider the types of performativity and etiquette, tacit and fatic, that are part of the ways that social relationships are constituted through the material and immaterial dimensions of the ways that people use, experience digital media. Finally, the mobile itself emerged as a personal archive of relationships and families. Continued innovations in digital ethnographic methods will enable us to understand these uh, intimacies and relationships. Summary and conclusion. As a research concept, to uh, proceed to undertake digital ethnography, researching social relations, researching relationships, relationships as a concept. Uh, in this uh, fifth chapter, uh, others have explored the various ways in which digital ethnography can provide insight into understanding relationships. From customization outside the phone to the use of mobile phones for calls and playing games, this chapter has uh, sought to demonstrate the multiple ways in which the digital as both a material culture and a set of media practices is overlaid and entwined in our maintenance of relationships. By focusing on the importance of co-presence in maintaining relationships, we have sought to demonstrate a variety of ways through which digital media and technologies can be used to create a sense of presence over space and time, whether the distances to be bridged or temporary moments of not being together as a couple or distance created through a migration and transnational livelihoods. The quality of the sense of co-presence properties are intricately tied to the affordances of particular digital media and technologies. Text, voice, archiving, synchronous and asynchronous communication, and so on. A particular focus revolves around the importance of social and cultural context in defining how digital media and technologies are taken up in relationships. Throughout these ethnographic examples, the focus on mobile phones and transformation acknowledges the importance of understanding mobile phone use in the context of relationships rather than the mobile phones. <coughs> Excuse me. Quote, impact on, unquote, people in different cultural contexts. Let me repeat this statement. A particular focus revolves around the importance of social and cultural context in defining how digital media and technologies are taken up in relationships. Throughout these ethnographic examples, the focus on mobile phones and transformation acknowledges the importance of understanding mobile phone use in the context of relationships rather than the mobile phones impact on people in different cultural contexts. It is the relationship dynamics that determines how mobile phones of different types, basic phones, smartphones, and uh, mobile media are taken up in each cultural, social, and relationship context.
Yes. My dear uh, <clears throat> participant, uh, my presentation is done. And uh, thank you for listening. And uh, uh, I hope you are enjoying uh, my reading of the text by this, uh, the famous uh, authorities in the field of digital ethnography, Professor Shara Ping and her co-authors, and they have done excellent work in digital ethnography, and uh, they are the authorities on this planet in this field, emerging field. So uh, chapter after chapter and uh, concept after concept, we are trying to understand um, how to engage and approach the uh, field sites, um, digital media field sites uh, or uh, digital ethnography um, through the, their proposed concepts and they have proposed principles of digital ethnography, how to operate and uh, what are the areas to look for, what are the different approaches and methods and, and the concepts that are needed to be understood uh, uh, with um, much detail. So I'm trying to present those things to you. Um, so, yeah. So try to uh, listen to these uh, video recordings um, again, 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 so that you can get uh, a clear picture. Uh, what are the important things uh, that are mentioned? What are the emerging concepts like a co-presence and a co-location and um, uh, different other uh, key cons uh, terms used to emphasize the emerging uh, ideas and insights in this uh, uh, digital ethnography. So in the upcoming uh, um, sessions, we are going to finish uh, three more concepts, uh, social worlds and events, and there is another one. And after that, we will also um, look at the book called um, <clears throat> Value Disciplines and Digital Disciplines. And uh, another book, uh, The Routledge Companion uh, for um, Digital Ethnography. There are 44 um, uh, papers presented in, the, in those uh, papers excellent uh, findings and uh, suggestions and a uh, uh, way forward uh, kind of thing were explained. So we are going to um, cover, as I mentioned in this, uh, in my course description presented to you. So I will proceed to those uh, um, works of these great scholars in the digital ethnography uh, from different countries. Um, their experiences and their insights, their uh, suggestions, the, uh, what are the methodologies they used, uh, what are the topics they investigated, so what are the research problems they have undertaken, and what are their findings, what are the tools and techniques. So by getting thorough with this kind of um, existing literature um, on, in this field of uh, digital ethnography, and digital anthropology. We will have a broader outlook and uh, um, uh, brushing up the um, thoroughly with this uh, uh, emerge, uh, newly emerged concepts so that we might be enabled and equipped um, to do digital ethnography meaningfully and productively. Yeah, thank you. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You, you highlighted a very good ideas about the uh, digital ethnography. That is the ro uh, roles of mobile phone. It becomes a very fruitful device in this digital ethnography. Uh -huh. As well as you, you also told us about the uh, increase uh, due to the increases in literacy rate, development becomes familiar than than uh, 
arranged barriers also. Then this digitally mediated communication, that means this uh, mobile phone, it becomes the tool it becomes a tool for uh, the research process in in today's lectures i know i know all of all this no sir then it uh, i i was very much impressed about this cl uh, uh, clerks my mother who father be that from that book you you have quoted some examples like uh, like mothers and the grandmothers roles in the family also no that uh, I got the point that is the two example for for social media and mobile phone example of Jamaica that is the grandmothers living apart from the house solving their family by using this mobile phone in this era. That's yeah. very great, sir. I am very impressed this this uh, session or to the today's session. Thank you, sir. Excellent, excellent, very good. So, yeah, the, when we are uh, studying uh, this existing literature, then we, we have uh, clues and uh, what can be done and uh, what are the ways to go forward kind of thing. So, yeah. yes, I appreciate your ideas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, <laughs> see, you. See, yeah. see you. Yes. Okay. See you in the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>